This video will show you how multiplication arrays are set up, what makes an array, and how to use arrays to solve multiplication. Alright, before we begin though, what is an array? An array is a number arranged into even rows and columns. So here I have a few examples. Let's take a look and see which one of these are arrays and which are not. So if we take a look at here, this number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 has been arranged into an even row and even columns. So this is an array. Over here, the number 4 has been arranged into even rows and columns. That is also an array. Down here, the number 3 has not been put into even rows and columns. So this is not an array. It will also not be an array if we have something like this. Even though it appears to be in rows and columns, it is not even. So that would not be an array. Over here, even rows and columns, so that is an array. So how do we use arrays to help us with multiplication? Here we have a multiplication fact, 6 times 5. All right, so 6 times 5 is 6 groups of 5. Let's see where that is in our model here or in our array. Remember, an array is even rows and columns. So let's see, how many rows do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I have 6 rows, and inside each row I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 6 rows of 5. Now, I might already know my multiplication, but if I don't, I can use this to help me solve and figure out how much pieces I have. So here I have a row of 5, another row of 5, and I have 6 of them all together. So in order to find out how many pieces this array is for, for an array of 6 times 5, oops, then I simply need to count up by my fives. So here I had 5, 10, 15, 20, continue on 25, and 30. Alright, so 6 rows of 5 is 30. And that is how the multiplication fact shows that 6 times 5 is 30. 6 groups of 5. I'm going to go ahead and finish my other groups here just to make it nice and pretty. All right, so there's my six groups of five. Now, many times we have another thing called an open array. An open array is simply an array that does not have the square tiles in it or the round tiles. So inside of here is going to represent a number of something, but we just don't see it. So back here we had our pieces here. And imagine that we took those and we simply put them in a square and took out these pieces on the inside. That would create an open array. So writing an open array for 6 times 5 is going to end up looking almost the same. 6 rows of 5. So I'd still have 6 rows and I'd have 5 in each row. So an open array is the same thing So what we did right here, just without the actual pieces on the inside. I would know that there are 30 pieces inside here. So this is an array for 6 times 5, or 30. Here is a slightly harder array. I've taken a number. They're arranged in even rows and columns, but I have a lot of them, and I have a nice a rectangle around them just to help me organize my um, numbers. So let's take a look here. What do I have? How many rows do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so I have 12 rows of what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 12 rows of 5. So this is going to represent the multiplication fact 12 times 5 equals a number we're going to figure out. Alright, so if I'm counting by 5's and I have 12 of them, perhaps I already know what 12 times 5 is. But more often, we're most likely not going to be able to know that quickly off the top of our head. It is not a multiplication fact. So what do we do to solve this? 
So I am going to split my 12 into easier pieces. Notice this array is quite large. So I am going to decompose my 12 into smaller pieces. Now there's a couple of different ways you could decompose your 12. Your 12 could become a 6 and a 6. Your 12 could become a 10 and a 2. So let's divide it directly in half. So I'm going to move my 12 over here and I'm going to split it into two. Six and six, which means I'm going to have six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've now split my array into two smaller pieces. And the reason why I'm doing that is to make it easier to count up how many pieces are in my array for a 12 times 5 array. So now I have 6 rows of 5. Now if I know my multiplication facts, 6 times 5 is 30. And down here I still have 6 rows of 5, 5 in each. So down here I have another 30. So 30 and 30 together make 60 or R60 when you add them together. So 12 rows of 5, or 12 times 5, is 60. Here is what that problem would look like as an open array. So again, here are my pieces all divided. If I had the same problem and I said, all right, I have a 12 by 5, or 12 times 5, 12 rows of 5. So my 12 is going to be along here and I have 5 in each row. This time I'm actually going to decompose my 12 into a 10 and a 2. Now 10 rows is going to be a lot longer than 6 and 2 rows would probably only be about right here. So now I've split my array into two smaller pieces. Remember this is an open array so I don't see my pieces in here, but I have clues on the side here to help me figure out how many pieces would be inside each smaller array. So let's start with the easier one first. If I have two rows of five, I'm going to have ten pieces inside this part of the array. Up here I have ten rows and I still have that 5 in each row, which means 10 times 5, I have 50 pieces inside this array. All right, so again, that would be a little different down here if we had tried it on that previous example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So imagine that we had split the array like this, and we got rid of that one. So we have not changed our overall array. It is still 12 by 5, but now we have a 10 rows by 2. So I want you to imagine all those pieces there. Can you see it when the pieces are not there? It's still the same thing. So now I have 50 plus 10 all together. I have 60 whole pieces in my entire array. So 12 rows of 5 is 60. What happens when I have a really big array? We have a lot of pieces. Now notice the arrays are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, we're not going to want to draw all these pieces. We are going to want to transition to an open array because an open array will allow us to find big um, amounts or larger amounts of numbers instead of having to draw all the individual pieces for the array. So let's take a look at this array and try to solve it here. How many rows do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 rows of what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I have 12 rows of 15. Now 12 times 15 would give us the answer to how many pieces are in our array, but that is not something I know off the top of my head. So let's break down our 12. 
I'm going to decompose it into two. Let's break our array into smaller pieces. I'm going to break my uh, 12 into 6 and 6. 6 rows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows. There we go. And let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so we have 6 rows. Now I'm left with two smaller arrays. I have 6 rows of 15. Well, that's still not easy enough for me to do in my head, so I'm going to also decompose my 15. So let's decompose my 15 into a 10 and a 5. So now to do this, I'm going to further break my array into smaller pieces. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so now instead of having two smaller arrays, I actually have four smaller arrays. But now, if I look closely, I know the numbers that I have for rows and for columns are numbers I can do in my head. So if I have six rows of 10, that is the same amount as 60. 10 times 6 is 60. So I have 60 pieces right here. Over here, I have six rows of 5. 6 times 5 is 30. Down here, I have six rows of 10. That is another 60. Over here, I have six rows of five, which is a 30. So now to find my answer, 60 plus 60 is 120. 30 plus 30 is 60. Altogether, I have 180 pieces inside here. So 12 times 15 is 180. Now, can I do this without drawing 180 pieces inside of here? Yes, we can if we use an open array. So we're going to do the same problem. We know that it we want 12 times 15. And now we're going to build an array. Well, 12 rows of 15. We would split it up, decompose it into easier pieces, separate out our array, so 6 and 6, that would be right about in half, 6 rows and 6 rows, 10 rows and 5 rows, this is a little bit different, probably be more about right here, okay, so 10 rows, and now we have our open array that's been split, notice it looks pretty close to what we did over here, just without the pieces on the inside. So now we use the information on the side to help us count up. The 6 is 6 rows, and in each row there are 10. So 10 times 6 is 60. Down here, 6 rows of what? 10. Over here, 6 rows of 5. 6 rows of 5. When I add all those pieces together, I get 180, which is the same amount as I had over here. And that is how to do a... Um, larger problem for multiplication using an array and then an open array. The last section of our array videos are going to be how to draw from scratch our own array problem. So let's say we have 12 times 6 and we need, we're going to use an array to help us solve. So the first thing we need to do is draw the area where our array would represent. So this is going to be an open array which means I'm not going to draw the 12 rows of 6 inside, but I'm going to use the clues to help me. So here I would have 12 rows and 12 rows of 6. 12 is not a number I enjoy multiplying in my head, so I'm going to break it up into smaller pieces, a 6 and a 6, which means my array has now been split in half. That's not quite exactly half, so I'm going to move my line a little bit here. There we go. So now I have two smaller parts of my array. If I have six rows here, and down here I know that there's six in each row, six times six 
is 36. So there would be 36 pieces inside here. Down here, 6. 6 rows of 6 is also 36. So on this part of my array, I also have 36. To find my answer, I add those together. 30 plus 30 is a 60, and a 6 plus a 6 is a 12. Add those together, and I get 72. So, 12 times 6, 12 rows of 6 in each row, is 72. And that is how to draw your own array.